I recently spent some time researching what sort of biometric support Python had. So, you know, sort of things like fingerprints, you know, sensors and whatever. And I found some stuff I was looking for, but not quite everything. So there is touch ID support. There is pass key support, which I'll probably talk about another time, but there wasn't anything like Windows Hello support and various other fingerprint sensors had various different libraries that only catered for certain things. So uh, the world of Python biometrics is a bit weird at the moment. So this video is going to focus quite heavily on the Touch ID side of things because that's what I was able to find. But I do spend some time at the end talking about a potential implementation for Windows Hello fingerprint style stuff using something called Python Net. So if you're interested in that stuff, then potentially stick around to the end. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider like it to let me know and maybe subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. If you're feeling particularly generous, you could become either a member or a patron using the links in the description below. Yeah, with all that out of the way, let's put this to use. So to install the library on our system, all we need to do is pip install and then we need to install it from a github repository because it's not on the python package index at the moment so we could do git plus https colon colon or colon slash hash github.com slash parafoxia slash python dash touch dash id the most eagle-eyed among you will notice that this is actually my github profile this is not my project i do want to stress that i simply forked it and made a few updates to it the original version hadn't been updated in seven years. Amazingly enough, it still worked perfectly. Uh, so I just you know, you know, changed a few calls and optimized a few things, added typing to it and stuff like that. But the original project is no longer on the Python package index and I don't want to put it back up without asking if it's okay first. I could probably do it fine, but in good faith, I don't want to do that because uh, he took it down for a reason, so. Yeah, uh, but we can install that and that will install from the GitHub repository. And then we will install also some PyObjective-C stuff because that's what this is built on. And I will show the implementation in a bit. Uh, but basically PyObjective-C is a bridge between Python and Objective-C. So it's not even really a wrapper. It is just a bridge for it. Uh, I imagine that's all handled in here. And then you have these different frameworks that just wrap the different things. Uh, and Objective-C is an Apple technology. Uh, so that's how this has been gotten to work. And that's also why this is kind of a Mac OS slash iOS. Well, actually not anymore. Um, yeah, like any Apple computer with a fingerprint sensor will work with this, uh, pretty much is what I'm saying. Uh, so to actually use it, we just need to do import touch ID like that. And if we do if name equals main, we can print touch ID dot is available and this will tell us if the touch ID system is available on our computer. And if we do a script like that, we can see that it is because I'm running this on a MacBook. Once we've done that, we can simply do touch ID dot authenticate. Maybe run that and we'll see it's quite small. So I have to zoom it in, but it is actually asking us for authentication with our touch ID. And if I were to do that, it works. So the true indicates that the authentication was successful and that everything was fully authenticated just fine. And that pretty much covers the entire public API for this package. The only other thing you can do is that you can actually um, change the reason for it. So we can set reason here and then we can do for the memes. And if we run the script again, we'll see that <laughs> point 3.12 is trying to for the memes because I've I've done that well. So yeah, it appends it after is trying to. So the reason will go here. If we then cancel it as well, we'll get an error saying the authentication was canceled. So if we head over to a Firefox window, this is uh, the fork that I've done. Uh, so as you can see, I've made it typed and this is the entire code for it. So I would be lying if I said I understood what everything in this did. Uh, I might actually bring up the blame just so you can see how much I actually, well, actually I changed quite a bit in terms of styling and stuff. I won't do that. Um, but we have our local authentication stuff. So this is all from um, the, from the Pi Objective C framework. And then we create a, a DLL of none, which I tried to look up what that did. There were answers. I don't understand them. If someone understands what the hell this does and do let me know. I did actually have to change this because the, <laughs> There are two ways to do this and one of them throws a typing error. So that's fun. It does all this um, 
semaphore stuff. This is necessary, otherwise Objective-C will have an absolute fit. We then have some stuff for typing here. We have our is available, which just evaluates the policy. Our authentication, we check if it's available first, we create a new context, a new semaphore, and we have this callback. So this evaluate policy localized reason reply takes our ktouch ID policy, which is essentially, you know, our touch ID thing. And the evaluate policy runs our touch ID stuff, I guess. And then we pass in a reason, and this is just a string. And then we pass in a callback, which is this, which takes a success and an error. So this will be either true or false. And then the error will be, you know, an error. I couldn't figure out the exact type, but the only thing we need on the error is a localized description. So I just created a protocol for that. <laughs> Hooray for typing. So we create a result here with our success and our error. And the reason we can't just error straight away is because we need to dispatch this semaphore and then we need to wait for it. Otherwise, you'll get the equivalent. Well, I was going to say the equivalent of a kernel panic. That's not true. You'll get an unhandled error from Objective-C directly and it's really unclean. So we just wait for the semaphore to be dispatched. And then if there was an error, we uh, raised the error at this point. So there's actually not an awful lot of code to it, really, surprisingly enough. It is just a bit weird to understand, and the person who wrote this knows an awful lot about this stuff, um, or an awful lot more about this stuff than I do. <laughs> but the main reason I actually wanted to fork it, uh, I mean, all this stuff about the typing and stuff was just niceties. The main reason I wanted to fork it was this setup.py file. So previously, the installed required just PyObjective-C, and there are a lot of frameworks for this. So if I do PyPI and do PyObjective, oh my God, let's actually be able to type. I'll zoom in in a wee second. Bah, 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 bah. There we go. We can see is we have the core and then we have these frameworks and you can see just how many frameworks there are. And if you uh, pip install PyObjective-C, you install all of them. And I do mean all 153, 154 of them. <laughs> There's a lot. So changing it to just, oops, require the, the local authentication framework, installs the core, it installs all of its dependencies. Everything is like properly dependency mapped, but it reduces the number of dependencies to four instead of 154, <laughs> uh, which is the main reason I wanted to do this. The other reason I wanted to do this as well is because this code works fine. If I go into the commits, you'll see that the last commit that wasn't me, uh, oh, can I just go into the commit history, please, was seven years ago. <laughs> it hasn't been updated in seven years, and it still works. And it was it was archived on that as well. So I, yeah, I just wanted to show that it still worked, and it was really cool. My original plan for this video was to have a Windows Hello in here as well for Windows computers. Apparently that doesn't exist. There, like no one has made a Python package for Windows Hello fingerprint sensors yet. The closest I can find is just various different libraries for like fingerprint sensors. There's this one, Finger Reader, that has been tested on like the R30X. There's this one that's been tested on on the um, Giantech ZFM sensors. Uh, you know, there's all these different ones and there's another one for, oh, I forget what the bloody company is called now, but there's a company that makes them. Let me see if I can actually find it. This Adafruit one. So there's this Adafruit one that's sold and you can buy, and there is actually a PyPI package to be able to link into this thing, uh, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure if you can like just put this into any computer or whether or not it's a, uh, it's like a Raspberry Pi thing, but you can do that. But I could not find any way to do it um, just in pure Python. What I did find was that the Windows Hello API is a thing. So there is a Windows Hello API um, and it sucks as far as I can tell. It looks, I mean, this is all just nonsense, really. <laughs> There's like an awful lot of stuff. I, I don't know, like, yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe this one. I hadn't actually looked at this one. Oh, this one looks as though it'd actually be a bit... Oh, this one looks more useful, actually. But this is a C-sharp API, which, of course, Python doesn't support. 
until you install Python Net, which is a uh, C sharp or uh, well, specifically a dot net and a mono. Um, it's not a wrapper, is it a wrapper? I don't know. It just kind of installs the entire uh, .NET system into Python, and then you can start installing important stuff from here. So I think the cleanest option to be able to import or to or implement something for Windows Hello, sorry, is to do it is to, to work out what calls you need and then do it in Python .NET, and then that will probably be fine. I think I am planning on trying to do this. <laughs> I can't guarantee I'm going to have the time uh, to do it because I do have a full-time job and everything. But I do want to see if I can get this to work, even though I have literally just binned off Windows. <laughs> I have a MacBook and a Linux computer, and that's pretty much all I use now. Um, so the perfect time to build a Windows Hello system. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you plan to use this in your own project, and if so, how? I want to know kind of how it's being used. I want to know what sort of cool use cases you come up with it. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any experience with Python Net, uh, because that might be quite useful <laughs> if you could share some insights into that. Because uh, I've never used, I've used C Sharp before. I've obviously used Python before, but I've never, I've never done the two. So it'd be useful if you do have any experience with that to kind of share your experiences in the comments. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazar Rushman and the Third for being so generous. If you want to know all about a free alternative to GitHub Copilot that I actually kind of like, then I covered that in last week's video, so make sure you go and watch that. But I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.